Yeah, I mean, basically, like, I'll use the term hello blur. <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. Martha, you should be here with me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because like, I feel like I'm the whole scene. We've had revolutions, musically. We are due one. Do we need to start one from here? Maybe. So, my love story with music. Um, I think uh, music is basically my personal therapy, so it's basically all I do to get through most things in life, actually. Um, yeah, I grew up in a, in a very small town and my parents got divorced when I was very young and I was put into um, boarding school at a very young age, so music was really something I could do that gave me a sense of independence and a sense of um, identity. So yeah, it's really, you, you just kind of have to, yeah, it's kind of everything to me. <laughs> I think it was always there since I was a child. Um, it has a very strong connection, you know, with where I come from. I'm from the Caribbean north coast of Colombia, where music and culture and all of that sort of um, folklore is very, very important to us and is impregnated in us since a child, since childhood. Um, I've always loved music. I think my parents' record collection was a biggie. Um, I knew pretty much all of the Beatles albums off by heart by the age I was eight. I must have been maybe about 10 before my parents were like, Every time you heard My Boy Lollipop, you would just get up and dance. The first kind of like involvement I had was when I went to the JMS open evening to like try out some instruments. And then that's where I found my first instrument, which was the flute. I remember a music teacher called Mrs. Cavi um, in primary school who inspired me um, by playing Ravel's Bolero, which is just a really technical song which slowly builds over time and gets more and more intense. And it was like a really great early lesson in how there's all sorts of storytelling possibilities that could come out of sound without any language. When I was a teenager, I went through a really difficult um, stage with my mental health. And I went to go and see a new Pixar movie at the cinema. And I remember so vividly sitting in the cinema and hearing a score by Michael Gacchino for I think probably the first time and for that period I felt like I was okay and I felt like there was a world out there to look forward to. I am a folk musician and I'm a student here in Jersey. I'm a music composer. I'm a singer. I am a professional musician. I am a DJ. I am a musician, a music psychotherapist and a music artist. Music is the lifeblood of our island. I think my connection to the island where I'm from is the beating heart of the music I make. I find Jersey as a place to create very uh, powerful. I think because of its landscape, the expanse of sea and sky um, feels really important. I would say that most of my work is inspired by Jersey. I find the landscape of Jersey and the sea in like so calming and it really speaks to my soul. Well, I suppose if I had to write a track called Jersey, it would probably be in a minor key because it's very grey most of the time and I'm very used to a lot of sunshine. If I were to compose a piece of music for Jersey, it would sound like long <laughs> legato strings that kind of ebb and flow like the um, tides and I think tiny little like tuned percussion that sounds like the scuttling little <laughs> crabs on the beach. Um, I think it would sound, yeah, a little bit like both of those, those things and some rough, like, cello that <laughs> overscores it, like the headlands and, yeah. <laughs> It'd probably be something for orchestra. And I know that piece, A Beautiful Jersey, has already been, um, so I don't know, that would probably be my inspiration. 
I throw you something like more along those lines, maybe bring some other influences in. What's well, Jersey? It's the sound of gongs beat underwater, <laughs> undulating waves and the banging of uh, nautical bells. <laughs> my goddaughter played one of my singing bowls yesterday. And interestingly, it, it's, um, it corresponds with the heart chakra, so it's G. Um, with a with an A overtone, and I played it, and I held it to her ear, and she said, "It sounds like the ocean." And so every time something like that happens, I think, "Oh, I'm hearing Jersey a little differently." Being able to access music makes our community feel enriched and connected. We're mainly made of water. Have you seen what sound does to water? Music's just a powerful tool. It's, a, it's also a weapon. It's also magical. I know if I've got you in the right frame of mind, I can make the hairs on your neck stand up. I can make you jump up with joy. It's quite funny, actually, you know, growing up, I seem to remember there was a lot of talk about, oh, we need to leave Jersey. It's got nothing to do as young people. But music was the answer in many ways. It was the opportunity to create, um, you know, create events yourself. If there's nothing going on, then you go and create the thing that's happening. Art is something which empowers. Art is something which expands how we see the world and, and to make it a better place. Music is a safe space which should be open to everyone. I think as a woman in the music industry, I definitely have been through various periods of doubting myself and my position in the industry. I felt particularly afraid of this when I was first starting out in um, sound engineering and composition. I was very afraid of what it means to be often the only woman in the room and in music studios and working late nights. I learned more about black, mu black history through music than I did at school. You had protest songs, you know, civil rights songs. Some of them were so powerful you know, you know, that they actually scar you for life. How can you not be touched by it? I think um, it's really important to acknowledge that globally the music industry um, is, has been a space run by men, um, and often white men, and to be thinking about really what the impact has been on um, artists of colour, female artists, um, on how much um, exposure they have had. So I think this is a global problem, but I think the music strategy in Jersey is well placed to actually be making a commitment to looking at um, making um, the music uh, space in Jersey uh, really accessible. We're so proud of our music scene and we want to celebrate and nourish it. And I'm glad to say that now it seems to be the first time that people are listening and we're doing something about it. I think it's crucial for there to be continued investment in the maintenance and support of that scene. When people are making art that brings people together, that should be something to be held up and something to be celebrated and supported. I feel positive about the future of Jersey's music sector. Um, I think always, no matter what, there will be people who love music and who um, aspire to be within the music industry. And I think music transcends everything. Let's make some noise, support the music manifesto. And one more, a tune is a tune is a tune.